This is the Hartford Online Radio Network. 21st Century Audio. Delivered. On the horn.com. Well, it's good news, folks. We are officially open for business. The podcast that explores all things business, entrepreneurship, technology, marketing, customer service, and making a few bucks for yourself. Bandwidth for On the Horn is provided by Amazon S3 servers. Amazon S3 is storage over the internet. Retrieve any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. Highly scalable, reliable, secure, fast, and inexpensive, all from a name you trust, Amazon. For more information about Amazon S3 storage, visit AWS. Dot Amazon.com. This is episode 51, The Allure of the Franchise. I've always wanted to know more about franchises, so I'm excited that we're going to do this topic. Hey, by the way, Open for Business is sponsored by Gateway Financial Partners, the accounting firm of Budwitz and Meyer Jack, Deepwater Seafood, and CentralCTDental.com. I'm Brian Parker, joined today by Zen Master Tommy Russo, co owner of LR Productions a full-service advertising agency, audio-video production house. Find him at lnrproductions.com. Hello, Tommy. Hey, Brian. Good evening. How you doing? I am just wonderful, sir. Glad Thank to hear you. That. Ken Cook is also here, acclaimed author, speaker, Fortune 500 consultant, and contributor to Inc. Magazine, now running Peer-to-Peer Advisors. Check him out at peer-to-peeradvisors.com. Hello, Ken. Brian, good evening. Tom, how oh, are you? I'm doing great, Ken. Good to see you. You too. So our topic tonight, how about this for a setup you want your own business so you get your own business but without any of the startup headaches does that sound good well a franchise might be just what you're looking for all sorts of that and hot potato news coming up and we're going to start it off as we always do with some great quotes from big tommy tommy Give us those quotes, baby. Here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach this evening. I did some homework to find some relevant quotes for tonight's show, obviously related to franchising. Uh, and it was a little bit it was a little bit challenging. So here's what I've got for you. You know, you've read those inspirational quotes in franchising, stuff like, look after the customer and the business will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Now, that's from Ray Kroc, McDonald's founder. Mm -hmm. Well, here are some other quotes that you don't hear as often but that are also molded from the cold, hard reality of franchise operations. And so I'm just going to read a series of them that I think are fun, funny, interesting, and insightful and address a number of the things that we're going to be talking about today Excellent. in regards to franchising. So here's one of them. And none of these have a name associated to it. Oh, no. We don't have to guess You guys it? don't have to guess. It's, it's a little bit of a different approach. Off the hook tonight, Brian. Sigh of relief. Sweet. If everything seems to be going well, you have obviously overlooked something. <laughs> yes yes okay right isn't that great franchise or not right that exactly still applies now here we go for another one granted mr wheeler's ideas are stupid and unreasonable but he owns this franchise center and i think we should go along with him <laughs> uh, i didn't say it was your fault i said i was going to blame it on you that's an owner to an employee that's a great one in fact i am now going to use that every 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 show. I like that. <laughs> I'm blaming that all on Evan in the chat room. Now, here's, a, here's another one. This one I have to say I like a lot. Nothing makes a person more productive than the last minute. Yo, absolutely. That's for me. Right? Deadlines, That's for me. baby. Deadlines. Oh, I, I love mean, deadlines. Does that hit a home run? I mean, I hate them, but I love them. Yeah. It's the only way. Yeah, no. I need the excitement. I got to have Can the data. It, it doesn't get done. No mere mortal will be able to get this done. So if I do it, I am like a super procrastinator. Nothing like that last minute thing. So here's one from a franchise owner to his staff or her staff. Be thankful for problems problems, or idiots would have your job. That's, you know what, that's pretty good. You know, when, that's that, good that when one. hiring someone. Yeah. That's good in hiring. Uh, I'm no. Not, no. That well, one doesn't work at all. I think that works that's, brilliantly. That's, but you know that there's managers out there that are going to say those exact words. I agree more with, than that to <laughs> think it unfortunately right absolutely coffee's for closers yeah uh, it's um it's not hard to meet expenses they're everywhere that's a franchise owner another very good one 
two more to go here, boys. If you can smile when things go wrong, you have someone in mind to blame from a franchise owner. If you can wow. smile when things go wrong, you have someone in mind to blame. Well, that's very pessimistic. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, you know, it's well, <laughs> like the rest of these quotes. I mean, where did you find these? <laughs> I went on I, great franchise quotes. I went online. I did some oh, homework. Oh, that's scary. Sorry, you sorry, Ken. I love my work. I could sit and watch it all day long. That's from an absentee franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So I told you I was going to take a little bit of a different approach today. Mix it up, folks. That's it. The, the quotes are done. I'll go back to the old format next week. My sense is this is <laughs> not going to be a love fest with franchises tonight. <laughs> Come on. All right. We'll, we'll be neutral coming out of the gate. No, okay. you don't have to be neutral. Be, be whatever you want to be. Be all that you can be. There you go. That, that's not that I can do. All right, are we going to do a little hot potato news Where's here? Where's that campaign? We are. Be all that you can be? Come on, what is that campaign from? Did U.S. You? Army. You got it. Yeah, I right. know the guy that wrote it and produced it. Really? Yeah. Yep. A guy cool. named Dave Mullaney out of Manhattan. Good that's for funny. Him. Yep. See, I, I think that's a great one. The The army of one thing is a horror. Is it, That's terrible. That's completely not what the army is about. You, we don't want a bunch of Rambos out there, an yeah. army of one. But anyway, I digress. Who's got the first hot potato? Hot potato news. Our Facebook clicks totally and utterly meaningless. Yes. This is, I was shocked to hear this. I know. And it came from Brad Smallwood from Facebook, nonetheless, speaking at an IAB conference in New York. What's IAB? I haven't a clue. Okay, good. Uh, and basically his one liner was, clicks don't matter. He basically says, look, uh... When it comes to Facebook, the clicks aren't the important thing. He said that uh, research from Nielsen showed that a 0.07% correlation between high click-through rates and sales. And he also cited some data from Data Logic that 99% of sales generated from online branding ad campaigns came from people who saw the ads but did not click on them. Hmm. Interesting. So the conclusion from the whole thing is that clicks, impressions, reach, frequency, all of them are important depending on who you are. I, I agree with that. Well, I think there's a lot of folks that rely too much on, I need to like shotgun blast as much as out to as many people as possible. Yeah. And that's not the way to do it. I mean, I have, and this could just be because I'm a small business guy and I'm not a big business guy, but when I'm out selling, I am selling to one specific individual mm -hmm. i'm not selling one at a time i'm selling to one specific individual i want to find out about that person what their likes and dislikes are and i want to, want to kind of sniper fire in yep. on that guy and really get to know it as opposed to the used car salesman who is selling one at a time but has the same shtick he's basically door-to-door -door salesman doesn't you know? matter who i walks get the same shtick the now i'm going to i'm going to give it to you and now i'm going to give it to you so yeah. there's the difference there and then these big shotgun approaches, you know, unless you're doing like image advertising or you're a, a pizza place that just needs to get uh, that just needs to get uh, mentions. Yeah. And the bottom line of this, though, is know who you are, as Brian just eloquently described himself and measure them and set up your metrics to measure your success there. But the real bottom line, whatever advertising you do, you got to get sales. Yeah. Period. Yeah, that's absolutely it. Yeah. I mean, it really is that fundamental. It's all about sales. So. And, and it's kind of, you know what, the metric thing is great because I think people get wrapped up in metrics because they are cool because they're scientific and you can track stuff and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you have to say, how much is a dollar worth to you or 5000 mm -hmm. or $10,000 mm -hmm. worth to you? How much effort is that worth to you? And then the big metric is, what do you take home in your pocket? Yeah. And just one other little sidebar on this. The curious thing about clicks is that Google was the birther of the common click approach, pay or pay per click, click throughs. Right, right. And curiously, they said that uh, Facebook has a high number of impressions, but the click through rate is going to be smaller than Google's. It doesn't mean the ads aren't effective. There's a lot of controversy from Facebook users saying they don't want ad posts in their news feed, but in Google, you expect those ads. So it's two mm. totally different animals. It, it is true. And there is a lot of uh, discussion around, well, what's your click-through ratio? 
and if I'm an advertiser and I advertise, let's say, on your website or your Facebook page or whatever, and I said, okay, well, I got, uh, you know, we got 30,000 impressions last month, and I'm going to charge you per impression. And he comes back to me, the advertiser, and says, yeah, but, you know, only uh, 2,000 people actually clicked on that thing. So I'm only going to pay for your two. So who's right in that scenario? Should he only pay for click-throughs? Or should he pay pay for impressions? He should pay for the metric that delivers the result he's looking for. Right. Period. My contention is he is getting access to an audience. This is how I sell it. Mm -hmm. He's getting access to my audience on my website. And it's your responsibility as the advertiser to come up with a good advertisement, a good banner ad, something that's going to make people want to click on it. Yeah. I'm not responsible for that. I am giving you all of these impressions. 30,000 people a month visit on the horn. They look at the damn page, and there's your ad. Yeah. That I can guarantee. What they do from there, I, I can't help you. If they click through, fine. I mean, it's just as if he said, yeah, but, you know, your click-through ratio was this. I got 2,000 click-throughs last month. I only got one client out of it, so that's all I'm going to charge. Well, that's not my fault. When you they, when they go onto your website, yep. how are you selling them? I mean, you know. But I'm not I'm running a, your business here. If I'm an astute marketer, my follow-on question to you is, break down your 30,000. Who are they? Give me a demographic profile. Give me a psychographic profile. Let well, me know who I'm can't reaching. Really, can't really do psychographic. But give internet. me a profile of some nature, so at least yeah. I know if it's a rifle or a shotgun. Yeah, and, and, and we can do that. You know, We know that 80% of our uh, page views come from within Connecticut, mm -hmm. and we know that uh, 70% of them have a household earning, because we did a a survey have a household earning of above eighty thousand uh, dollars a year well if i'm a high-end pretty good product or a high-end service and i'm an astute marketer that's an audience i want to reach if i'm connecticut based yeah absolutely you think eighty thousand household is high end that's two people making 40 grand no not no, as high as it used to be but it's higher than a lot i know but i guess you know. it's a relative term yeah I don't know. it's it's above median for sure I think in this marketplace and for the people that you're looking for, Brian, you've got to be probably a buck and a quarter to a buck and a half household income. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. For Brian's service, right. without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, for, uh, yeah. Uh, no, you got to be more than that. Yeah. For my, for, uh, for my investments? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you got to be higher than that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you uh, have to have a net worth of $10 million or more, so. Well, Moving that leaves on. me out. <laughs> we'll, we'll find another topic. Tommy, what do you got? Well, I have seven reasons why your brand will never be as awesome as Apple. I love this. Isn't this great? I love this. Was this was interesting. Yeah. This is a good find, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so I've listed them, and we can take them one at a time. Your product kind of stinks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he goes into you know why kind of sort of it's not as good as and i don't think ken you've read the the isaacson biography I have yet not. but i know brian and i have yeah. um when you read the detail the attention the focus the obsession that jobs put into every single product that came off that assembly line that workbench whatever you want to call it uh, there was a commitment to excellence. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things that I wonder, and I think we talked about this last week a little bit, was with the Apple 5, would that have been launched with that mapping software app if Jobs was still on the planet? Probably not. Probably not, no. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I'm thinking you're or right it would have well. been, it would have been showcased differently. Certainly the icon itself would not have flown. But yes. the point this guy is making is that yes. very few of us ever put the focus in to the, that a Steve Jobs, who clearly has created a world dominant, you know, company. Right. So in yeah. one form or another, your product kind of stinks. If you aspire to the brand, be best in class. Right. And that's exactly what he's done. Now, this one is interesting. Let's put this against what our idea of Apple is. Number two. Go Number ahead. two. Okay. Number two is, and you can read it. I don't mind. You don't care enough about your customers, which is really all what this show is ultimately about. Without is, a doubt. Right. Yeah. And I don't know why we go. It seems like we come back to Apple an awful lot, but think about what Apple is. Apple is very good products that are tremendously overpriced. Is really what an Apple product is. It's people who don't. 
who really want that last little fit and finish to their product, please just make it work, and I will pay you at least two times what I, I can get a, a PC for. I'll give you either a replacement or an additional adjective. Okay. Not only very good, but extremely innovative. Absolutely. Very, very innovative. Their products, you put them in comparison to Microsoft products. Like what? G give me an example. Microsoft PC. It's utilitarian. Okay. It works. So that would be like the MacBook, or not the Mac, but the Mac Pro. They have a tower, a Mac tower. But it, Microsoft software right. works. It's utilitarian. And everybody at some point in their life who has a PC has wished they were a gun lover, had a gun in hand, and could shoot the sucker. It is true. In order to be creative, it's harder to be creative with a PC than it is uh, a Mac. Just. And that might be it. It's giving creativity, taking the technology uh, barrier to entrance on being creative. Apple takes that away where you can still be very creative, but you have to have a lot of technical know-how when you're doing it on a PC. My last PC, the most irritating part of it, mm. were the layers of security software I had to have in order to protect the damn machine. Yeah. Uh, it drove the, me crazy. But that's one the of the, because it's so successful. I mean, if Apple gets enough machines out there that equals or surpasses how many PCs there are out there, they're going to have the same problem. It's just why, that why hackers would don't they want to buy. Want to? Well, well, they, they probably, probably they just they're, haven't. They're prof I mean, you look at Microsoft stock, it's relatively flat in comparison to Apple's, which yeah. is like climbing Mount Everest. Yeah. And it's because profitability and innovation go hand in glove. Yeah. Which yeah, and I think it also goes back to what Brian said, is that they're really overpriced, and I don't see that ever really changing. But let's move on to the next one. I love number three most of, most of all, because you're not pretty enough. That's absolutely true. Yeah. It's absolutely true. <sighs> it really is. I mean, the analogy that I always use in my own head, and I'm as much of a charlatan as anybody I know, go to a trade show. And it could be a booth where I have absolutely no interest in the product or service. But if it is manned by an attractive woman, I am there taking the brochures and hearing the spiel, every nuance of it. <laughs> it is true. But, but, but it also works for, from the opposite side. Of, oh, and, and you guys aren't. Of the no, I know. It's I, the candy bowl that gets me. I don't know yeah, about right. you, Brian. <laughs> No, I, I agree with that, and I will tell you, I have done uh, anecdotal uh, research on my closing ratio, Yes. and when I get myself in shape and I have a good haircut and a nice suit and all that kind of stuff, man or woman, I have a much higher closing ratio than I do if Point I look well like Impressions I, matter. the schlep that I am now. Our, but it, it, our good friend Bob the Gemis would, would give testament to that. Impressions yeah. matter. I, right. I would say, you know what, the fastest and easiest way for you to uh, maybe get 20% more business next year, lose 20 pounds. Or get a suit that makes you look like you lost 20 pounds. No, just lose 20 pounds. <laughs> that, would be the, that would be the lazy man's approach. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to number four. You're in here. This, I guess, is an this appropriate is segue. Yeah. You're spread too thin. <laughs> yeah. And this is what I mean. Apple absolutely overcharged. I mean, if you look at just like, you know, processor speed and uh, how, many, uh, how much RAM you have and what the, you know, gigabyte storage is, if you compare those specs to a PC, you can get, you you can get a a laptop for five six seven hundred dollars. Yep. You go over to Apple, you're two grand before you even add Load anything exciting on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like oh geez. Uh, so, and and that's something I struggle with, because I am terrible at selling. Uh, I'm not very good at selling myself. I really need to sell. Um. Well, I I guess I sell myself. I don't sell my process very well because hmm. i don't really think my process because i've done it for so long what does spread too thin mean to you though ken you don't charge enough no spread too thin to me means that you are doing too many things and not paying attention well enough to the things you're doing oh so you what you think hedgehog 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, that that's where I that's what that's where I, I went with th- it. That's where I went with it. And I was you know listening to you, Brian. I was seeing that you were. Oh, taking, I put it is in in yeah. Your yeah. spread is too thin. No, no, no. You're okay. spread too thin. You're just you you know you're wearing too many hats. Yep. That's, Absolutely. And jack of all trades, master of none. That's that's the kiss of death for me as well. Let's move on to the next one. I like this one oh, very geez. much too. You need to grow a pair. And I guess this applies to on both sides of the gender fence. Now we can go back to whether you charge enough and <laughs> value yourself well enough, because that's the cojones you need. Point well made. Right, because how many, if we had 50 people in this room right now, we said, do you feel that you're being overcharged for Apple product that you just bought this past year? How many of them would say absolutely yes? I'm guessing a high percentage would not say that. Because really? they, I do, I believe that. Because I think that they see the value in that product. I or, disagree. Do you? I think a high percentage would say yes and are happy to do it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's tough. Because it's kind of the same thing that Tommy just said. I'm happy to... I'm happy to overpay. Yeah. And that's, Which means that, um, why are you I, happy to overpay? Because I see the value in it. Oh, okay, well, then you don't feel like you're being overcharged. <laughs> no, they know they're being overcharged. I mean, you go out and buy yourself a Bentley or buy yourself a top-of-the-line Rolls-Royce and spend a quarter million dollars on the automobile. Yeah. You're out of your mind. Anybody with the right sense of anything is out of their mind to spend a quarter million dollars on an automobile and knows that they overpaid for it. Yeah. They can go get a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes equally equipped. Yeah. I hear but, what you're saying. Yeah. But, but another they way... like the cachet. They like the value. You know, the other I, <laughs> I keep it on the car thing. I, I kinda know where you're going now. We were looking at a Ford Edge yeah. for my wife. And we ended up getting a Nissan Murano, which is very wonderful. But I was I was of the mindset of you know what, let's try to, maybe I can, I was being a little cheap, is really what I was being. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's go look at the Ford Edge. Oh, the Ford Edge. Okay, you know, she's driving an Acura now, Ford Edge. That, yeah, I'd probably do it maybe somewhere in the 30s or something like that. Ford Edge starts at $50,000. I was like, are you kidding? For a Ford? A Ford SUV? Fifty thousand. Say what? Maybe that's why they call it the Edge. And so that's, what, and, and so that is, to your point, I'm thinking to myself, why would I spend fifty thousand dollars on a Ford? There you are. Like, I'll go get something else. But is that their version of growing a pair? Maybe that's as, their version. As, as, as that and fortunate. you know what? You see them everywhere. But what's another spin on growing a pair? To me, and again, um, Jobs was a great example of this when he decided to launch iTunes. I mean, he went to the record industry, he did. and he was as ballsy as they came yeah. to be able to say, "You guys don't have a clue as to how to market your industry, and you need me." Now that's and he great. won. He won. He won, won huge, big time. But that's he kind of screwed up. Apple, I think, because now all the other places, like especially TV. They looked at what they what Apple did to the recording industry, and they're like, "Oh God, no, we're not doing any deal with Apple. They're they're smart. They're smarter than us. Yeah, we're we're gonna get screwed if, if we go over there." But it is interesting. You got it. Uh, grow a pair. You know, what? it reminds me of the Jim Collins thing, the B hag. Yeah. The big hairy audacious goal. Yep. You need to have a big hairy audacious goal. Technology industry always Another... called it the bleeding edge instead of the leading edge. Oh, interesting. I like that. Yeah. Let's go on to number six. Yep. Uh, you break your promises. Shame how, on you. Shame yeah. on you. Well, you don't. That's but how many times has that happened? How many times has that happened to you with it's vendors? And, just like number two. Right. You don't care enough about your customers. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. You, yeah. yeah, you got to get there. And then last but not least, you don't have a good reason why. That's, and believe it. Yeah, right. not only have a good reason why, but also believe it, yeah. be able to communicate it. Sure, I've mentioned him a number of times on the show over the over the months. Um, Jim Rohn, who's a great sales trainer, unfortunately he's passed maybe two three years ago now, but he spoke to that with authority. What's your why? What's motivating you today? What yep. gets you out of yep. bed today? What motivates you to do the things you do? Is it your family? Is it your job? Is it your clients? What's the why? And here they're saying you just don't have a good reason why. Yeah. So exploring that, framing that, and making sure you've got that vision you know, crystal clear is, um, is a good thing. I think the best examples of a strong why are authentic evangelists. If you can find an evangelist to Tony Robbins, he's an evangelist. I mean, the guy has been passionate about his body and knowledge since 
when did he start? The 1980s, I think? I think you're right. I think it was back in the 80s. And he's as strong as ever with a following that's through the roof because he genuinely believes in what his message is all about. Sure. It's all sure. about the passion. Yeah. I agree. Neat stuff. I like those, Tommy. We got one more little hot potato news item, and that is, uh, yes, your new iPhone is spying on you. Huawei Technologies and ZTE Corp., China's two largest phone makers, uh, provided uh, opportunities for the Chinese intelligence services to tamper with U.S. telecommunication <clears throat> networks, and it's been found that they're spying. Really? Just released from a congressional report, the U.S. House of Representatives confirmed after a year-long uh, investigation, the two companies have ties to cybersecurity oddities, the Chinese military agents, and recently tried to bribe U.S. government officials for permission to begin doing business directly in the United States. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <coughs> Holy hubba hubba. Yeah, they, so, uh, I was sharing with Brian before the show. How do you pronounce it? UI? I say Huey. Huey. But it could be UI. But they uh, they have one competitor in the U.S. manufacturing telecommunications equipment, and that's Cisco. And it's only on the routers. All of their other competition for manufacture of telecommunications products are international companies. Ericsson, Siemens. In the U.S., it doesn't manufacture. So you have p municipalities companies wanting to build networks in the u.s and ui is the place they go to buy the equipment or at least channel the equipment through well, someone else scary neat, neat stuff we are going to do our little uh focus uh discussion here on the lure or allure i like of the allure allure of the franchise but first let me quickly tell you about our friends at centralctdental.com three doctors over there Doctors Camp, Sambor, and Lupini for serious issues or routine checkups. You can go nowhere else. These guys are really great. Um, I've told the story many, many times. You know, a buddy of mine playing golf bites into a, uh, a peach and chips his front tooth on Friday. By Saturday, he's back on the golf course with brand new tooth. It was great. You know, there's a little bonding thing to get him through it. Took away the pain. It was great. Uh, easy to get to on the Plainville Farmington line. Give them a call at 860-747-5761 or make an appointment online at centralctdental.com. Tell them on the horn sent you. That way we get some credit too. But really go there. Very sweet guys over there. Uh, the lore or allure of franchises. Uh, Ken and I were talking earlier this week. I don't think he's a big fan fan of the franchise model i'm actually okay with it but uh do you want to get us started on this thing? i it's sort of a misstatement that i'm not a fan i'm a fan of franchising with one provision okay that is that the business brand is strong and the model is proven without I, i've seen too many companies attempt to franchise for the sake of getting the money when actual when in actuality the business itself is right. not strong the model doesn't work the brand doesn't have a presence because if you're buying a franchise mm -hmm. you're buying two things you're buying a brand and you're buying a model that's it yeah no i i agree you know it, and what i was telling you ken was i think it's f f you have to be the right kind of person like in anything i mean yeah. even just starting up a business on your own you have to be a very special and crazy kind of person. So th there are, you know, these five questions here to ask yourself. Let me ask you guys uh, wh what you think of that. How much intellectual stimulation do I need in my work? Hmm. Do you think, you, do you get a lot of intellectual stimulation? In franchising? In franchising. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I think you follow the roadmap. Yeah. Franchising is a hybrid. Franchising is the difference between working for somebody and being a full-fledged start-my-own-business entrepreneur. Yeah. It falls in the middle. Yeah. And what you're buying is the methodology. I mean, you get a Big Mac in Glastonbury, Connecticut, and it will taste the same as a Big Mac in Oakland, California. Right. And that is what you buy with a franchise. And I think entrepreneurs who want to buy into a franchise need to recognize that you are buying 
something that hopefully is proven and works, but is also extremely limiting. I mean, you don't have a lot of opportunity to get creative. The only thing I'm going to say to that is, and, and you know, indulge me here because I'm going to use music as the analogy. There are a lot of players out there that can't create on their own, but they Correct. they put an enormous amount of time and effort into developing their technical skills through reading, mm -hmm. and then they can replicate essentially any piece of music on the planet. Right. If you were to ask them to pick up that instrument and play from their heart and soul, they would be challenged. But they're unbelievably accomplished. Agreed. And then you have a whole realm of musicians that you know don't have that technical expertise, but can pick up the instrument and play, and you will be blown away at their abilities segueing back to the whole concept of franchise for a guy like you i maybe like for all three of us the whole concept of that is not intellectually stimulating i'm with you 100 percent. i think i'd be bored pretty quickly but i think there's a legion of people out there oh yeah that plug into this and think whoa i'm gonna get these systems down maybe i'll even find ways to enhance them a yep. little bit and they are challenged and they are you know stimulated where a lot of us are looking at you know, I wouldn't want to do that. I want to kick the barn doors open and then come back and set the barn on fire because I'm going to try something completely different. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the thing yeah. with franchising, if you were to look at spikes or incredible growth in the franchising industry, you will find that it occurs most frequently in down economies because corporate people get laid off. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And where do I find my next job? There aren't any jobs. Okay, I think I'll open a franchise. It has a level of security tied to it because it's a proven business model. There's a brand that Hopefully, already exists. Yeah. yeah, and that those are the two provisions. The model better be good and the brand better be proven. So What's what, nice is that flywheel is already starting to turn when you yeah. buy a franchise. And you know what? I mean, I think that might be fun to, to give it a go at something. Not make this like my lifelong career but i think it'd be kind of fun i would maybe do something like a coffee shop or something like that i, I, mm -hmm. I couldn't do like a like starbucks a five guys or something like that i'll I come <laughs> does, i don't even know does starbucks franchise i don't even know i think yeah. they are i don't know that's a good question i don't there, know there can't be any room left like you know, <laughs> in the united states for a starbucks but so with our listeners and viewers out there in this moment in time do we want to channel the remainder of our conversation to suggest to them some of the things that they need to pay attention to if they were to consider, you know, sure. op opening yeah. a franchise? Makes some sense. Yes. Okay. Um, certainly, you know, what other priorities do you have? I always get the feeling of in a franchise, you got to make sure you, that you're still willing to work, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. Especially if you're, you know, if it's a single place and there's a lot of cash. Yeah. The, the thing that sinks those cash businesses is sadly employee theft. Absolutely. So you really have to, you know, know how many cups you have, how many cups did you sell, how many cups do you have at the end of the day? You yeah. Know? Well, what did you start with? A lot of inventory control, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, cash control. Hopefully you can find a place that's in a nice area. But I think the franchisor helps you pick a place, right? Some do. Yeah. So yeah. Not all, but some. The other thing, I'm going to amend an earlier statement. There is an opportunity for <laughs> creativity in a franchise, and that is in working with your employees. Yeah. How good am I at building a team? How oh, good that, am I see, at now that motivating? Be, that would be fun for me. There I would love go. that. Yeah, because if you can create a good team and a creative environment, then your profitability on a per-unit basis increases dramatically. I mean, really good franchise food franchises, for example, they're maybe three quarters of a million to a million and uh, two fifty per year in revenue per mm. location. Really? Yeah, really good ones. Really good. Really? Yeah, that's very low. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they they don't. They're not huge. I know Dunkin' Donuts has a lot of franchises. Yeah, and uh, there's one family I know, uh, the Batista family own several of them and uh you know I, I look at them and i say you know those guys are really you know they're they're killing it they're doing it great but they have several but then that's the other hard thing is once you get two or three or four how do you manage all of those well that becomes a business and that's the other thing about the franchise industry that today the nature of the industry is such that the proven brands 
they are growing through master franchise agreements. Somebody buys the rights to the state of Connecticut. Yeah. And you have a smaller number of franchisees that the franchisor has to deal with. It's better for the franchisee because they incrementally, with every unit addition, increase their revenue and their profit if they run things well. And the franchisor has 50 franchisees they have to deal with instead of 5,000. Mm. And it's a heck of a lot easier for them to deal with 50, even though every one of those 50 has more clout. So if you're new to the franchising business, your opportunity to get a McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, not so good. Hmm. So you're looking at brands that may not be as well established, and that's when your caution flags have to come up. So what are the resources for that individual that's looking to, you know, they've just been downsized out of corporate America, and they've made the decision that a franchise is in their future? Where do they go to? In terms of websites, yeah, I think you you, yeah. you pick something that you want. Yeah, you pick I, an industry you like, yeah. something you're accustomed to, something you can be comfortable with. I mean, there are certain franchises that are very public facing. Anything in the food industry, very public facing. You have to be comfortable with the public. So where you go to first is yourself. And figure yeah. out what you can do and feel comfortable with. And also find out if you're the kind of, and there are people like that, that do you need to visualize first where you're, you know, what does your day look like when you walk in? Are you in a strip mall? Are you in a standalone building? Are you in the corner of a you know, city block or something yep. like that? What is it that you, do you need to have that sort of mental image before you walk into this? Or are you someone that says, you know what, look, if, if, the, if the economics work out, I don't care where I am. I'm happy just to make the money. Well, think about it this way. A franchise is no different than any other business in that it has to be run, run well and run with passion. Read number seven on Apple's list again there, Tommy. Hang on here. It is you don't, you don't have a good reason why. There you go. You got to have a passion for it in order to be best in class. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, and where you go to from there is you literally just start your internet search. You plug in the franchise names. I remember once we were in California, California or Arizona, I forget which, and we saw an Oriental franchise fast food restaurant that we absolutely loved. I mean, we were there for like a week and we probably hit it four times because wow. we just loved the food. That's great. And I thought, hmm, I should check into franchising of this thing because that food is fabulous. It's healthier than McDonald's. And, I mean, it, it basically had good ingredients, and we enjoyed it. Yeah. The, the, the trick is knowing what the growing costs of that franchise are. Yeah. If you get more and more uh, popular. Yeah. You know, you, numbers hide a lot of sins, you know, and if you do start to really knock it uh, out of the park, you have to understand that those growing costs, you, you may be missing some of the low-hanging fruit. Yeah. So keep uh, keep in mind, what what is it going to cost to really grow this business? Whether it be advertising or just space. Yeah. It could just be space. Uh, experience is, uh, is uh, very important, not only for yourself, but for your employees. Yeah. Hiring is going to be huge. Yeah. Um, and you know what I also, this is huge. Uh, big operators achieve economies of scale. Very they have to so. have that because you know what? If you got a, if you got a small little place uh, and the franchisor, you know, if it hurts them to get you a really good sign to hang outside. Forget you it. You know, forget it. They don't have the financial foundation yeah. to make it work. I, I, I wish Dave was here because I can't remember the name of the document, but. There is a franchise disclosure document that every franchisor has to put out. And a lot of people are down on regulation on business. Yeah. But in this one instance, I think it's critically important. The disclosure document is extensive. And it literally has to tell everything about that franchise operation. From the people, to the financial situation, to the cost structure, to... Uh, what it's going to cost you to get up and running, and what your projected revenue should look like when you can expect profitability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that is 100% for the protection 
of that disconsolate middle management person who is grasping at a straw because the mortgage payments are still due and the job isn't there. And they said, I'm going to get a franchise. And this is to protect them. And I think it's the right document and the right level of protection. Amen. So. Neat stuff. There's a lot of great resources online. Uh, You can go check that out. But uh, CNN Money has a really nice section. Uh, Can we put that in the show notes, that last link there, the do's and don'ts of franchising? Um, One of the great things about the Internet now is that it's it's filled up with stuff. I remember the Internet long ago, not even that long ago, Hmm. five years ago, you may not have been able to find a whole lot about what yeah. you were looking for. And now, you know, you can you can find pretty much anything. Another good online source is entrepreneur.com because the Entrepreneur Magazine skews towards franchising. Right. And their online site has a lot of good detail. All right. Tight show, boys. That was very good. I appreciate it. Last words on financing or uh, uh, franchising. Do you like it? Do you, is it right for the right kind of person or what? Right person with a passion. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. And with a good professional team, a lawyer and an accountant that understands the ins and outs of franchising intimately. That's a very good point. Without a doubt. Thank you all for listening. We could not do the show without our sponsors, Amazon.com, Gateway Financial Partners, the accounting firm of Budwitz & Meyer, Jack, and Deepwater Seafood of Avon. Special thanks to Evan Richards, our chat room moderator. We're closing up business for this week, but we will see you next Tuesday at 5 o'clock. We will once again be open for business. We'll see you. Cheers. Take care.